Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve. In the last episode, we had the most hilarious dance of deduction. I broke out in laughter in the meantime, but this is a very well written part of this game because although it was so hilarious and made me laugh, right now it became really serious because there seems to be uh, something that Iris wants to hide. And we are going to find out in this episode what it is. I hope so at least. So let's just get going. In truth, I would like to have thought I could have pra predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly too the late consulting detective Perlick Sholmes. Oh, I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris? It must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the settee has been somewhat forgotten. Oh, but father! Perhaps we should find out our guest somewhere. Uh, we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Narohodo? Yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help carry him up. So will I. No, no, I can't manage alone, thank you. You have the UFT to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris' brew to stew. Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder, perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk, talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. We should do. Thing is though, okay, you know me, I'm really sorry guys, but we have to check everything. Alright, nothing here, but there must be something new on the chalkboard? No, there's nothing on the chalkboard. So everything is as it's supposed to be, apparently. Hmm, okay, so I guess we just talk to Iris? Do we just talk to Iris? Yeah, let's just talk to Iris, come on. Your daddy. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes, and that notes about all the cases they solved together are kept inside the metal chest. That's right, Hurley told me, you see. He said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what daddy must, buy, must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. Oh. His name wasn't anywhere in, uh, on any of the notes that I that he'd made about his work with Hurley. But then one day. That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? 
Yes! So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her in her eye. Let's talk about the autopsy report then. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting. I thought to myself. Because it was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes. Exactly! I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that it was the first and last time we'd been allowed even to look at it there. So you decided to steal it? When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the corona at the bottom of the autopsy report. Read Dr. John H. Wilson. Read Dr. John H. Wilson. Sorry, guys. So that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided then and then that I'd write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. I'm, I must apologize, Iris. Oh, oh. This is really all my fault. Holy! I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know, I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Corey and apologize, I promise. Yes, well, we'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. Clint's autopsy report has been entered under the court record. The autopsy report of the final victim of the infamous professor. The report was authored by Dr. John H. Wilson. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still. Oh! What? Huh? How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? <clears throat> Mr. Sholmes? Oh dear me, so you've noticed, I see. But that, that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Mr. Sato? You've turned as white as a sheet. Okay, okay, before we do anything, we want to know what is going on. Victim, okay, autopsy report, Corona, John H. Wilson, victim, name, uh, Clint Van Zeeks, male, age 33, nationality British, time of death, 31st May, between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observations. Death from a single, stab, a single stab wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Additional... Oh! Okay. Additional notes. Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document in corresponding ink was found. Autopsy findings. Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. John H. Wilson. We still don't know what the evidence is though. Hmm. Okay. What on earth is the matter, Mr. Sato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Naruto. The one from ten years ago. The writing. Isn't Dr. Wilson's at all? Huh? What, what do you mean? How could you possibly know that? 
Because I know this writing very well. This writing is my... It's my father's. What? what? Professor Mikotobas? Indeed, it's true. And now you know, my dear fellows. No, no, I don't know anything. What on earth does all of this mean, Mr. Sholmes? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind is just too extraordinary to believe. Please, you have to explain. Oh my god, what is going on? Okay, what if we present the autopsy report? Uh, Mr. Sholmes, about this. My dear fellow, without wishing to sound rude, I'm currently in the middle of a very important blink. Perhaps some other more convenient time, huh? Is there a set, a set time for your important blinks or are they an all-day affair, just so I know? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we, we are we gonna... We're just gonna converse. We're just gonna converse, guys. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely? Not possible, my dear fellow. Pray take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It... it does? Ten years ago is when father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to, the, to his return, where was Dr. Mikoto engaged? Uh, of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with his dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. I see. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. The details of Clint's autopsy report have been updated. We carried out the procedure through Professor Mikotoba actually penned the report. Your partner. Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the, publish from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most traveling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where's your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this autopsy report and the records of all your old cases were penned by the same hand, and if the autopsy report was written, though not signed, by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Eugene Mikotoba. In other words, Miss Susato's father. Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at, at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. You, you mean to say? Allow me to introduce you. To my great friend and partner, Mikotoba. P -p Professor Mikotoba. 
Schon sein Mikoto war. Das, das nennt's mir, that you're the real Dr. Wilson. No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self, Eugene Mikotoba, your father. Oh, of course. This is obviously too much for Sato-san to take in. I must say, though, how my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me, when was it again, Mikotoba? 16 years ago, Sholmes. Ah, oh, yes, quite. 16 years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital, some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right, so I decided I needed someone to share lodgings and the expense. And was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for little gain. And the situation of our con a cohab cohabitation let us pursue cases together, you see. Hard to believe, it was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar yourselves. The professor's killing. Yeah, the professor killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Shorms' famous partner. Father? G goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And, and that is? You know very well what it is. The unresolved battle of Iris's father. Uh, of course, I'd almost forgotten about that one. I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris's father. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventurers Adventures that are in the metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Shorts? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Shorts' partner, father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris' father must be you! Oh! Pam, my word, Mr. Sato. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. What? What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain. And I've always accepted that. But all this about Iris. Ooh, there it is, Susato-san's ice cold stare. No, no, ho no, hold on a minute. It was a very, it was very complicated. I mean, it's, it's really not what you think. Then perhaps you'd like to explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot. Just before she, not, r no, really, you've, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Shorms, say something, man. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Uh, Mr. Shorms, when did he get all dressed up? Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, Mikotaba and I have an urgent matter that requires a short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Shorms. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So get your coat, Mikotoba. The game is afoot! But, but, but...
But Charles, I really must give Susat a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later. Our carriage awaits downstairs already. You haven't changed one Yota, have you? I mean, really. I visit our home after ten long years. And when I open the chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. And as that, and as, and as if that, ah, sorry guys, and as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regain consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all this. Father, please, go with Mr. Sholmes now. What? what? I have no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interests. I trust you, completely. Susato. And sending the great detective and his great partner off on renewed adventures together. It's more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then, we'll speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruto. Good luck in battle, and in reaching a decision. A decision? Or whether to go back to Japan, I suppose? So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed, were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth, and that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. Oh my god, guys! But, oh no, that... Okay, that means that you, you just saw that, right? It said end. So... Okay, the episode is over without it. Oh, okay, so the. I think that the next episode is the last one, and it's just going to be that trial. Okay, so. Alright then. So, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you. Uh, I'll see you on the next episode of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Resolve. So, don't forget to tune in and see how the grand finale is going to unfold. See you then.